Welcome everybody to Bedbug TV. Yes, that's right. We've dropped Central from the name of Bedbug TV. Uh, welcome everybody to the brand new Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to you guys about using vacuums to deal with any bed bugs that may be in your home. You know, one of the more important tools that we use in our bed bug management and control plans is actually, yes, the very simple vacuum. Uh, you can go into a situation that has a lot of bed bugs associated with it and say, go to that mattress or box ring or couch or whatever you're dealing with, take this vacuum here or many other vacuums for that matter, and remove a lot of bugs from that piece of furniture in a very short amount of time. You know, people look at bed bugs and they say, well, you know, I see all the bugs on that piece of furniture. Why don't I just take some pesticide and spray those bugs? It takes a lot less time than vacuuming them, and then I don't have to worry about dealing with the vacuum after I'm done, you know, dealing with those bugs. If I just spray them, they're gone. But, you know, I've talked on this TV program and in other situations about resistant bed bugs. They're finding a lot of the populations that are in people's homes are tolerant and some are even resistant to a lot of the pesticides that we use today. So say if the bugs that you have in your home are resistant or tolerant to pesticides and you say to yourself, you know what, I'm just going to spray these bugs, I don't have to worry about them, they'll eventually die, we're good to go. But they're resistant. So you spray them and in the end, nothing happens. The bugs keep going about whatever they're doing and they're not out of the equation. You can take a vacuum, quickly remove those bugs, and you don't even have to worry about that. Now, a vacuum, yes, is a very good tool to remove bed bugs, and it can address some resistance concerns, but it shouldn't be viewed as a control device, meaning you're not going to solve most bed bug infestations with a vacuum alone. Um, you know, there are situations where we actually have pictures where we looked at a surface of, say, a couch and saw bugs on it and vacuumed those bugs off and then really pushed on that surface to get everything off of it. And then we take another picture after we're done and you can still see eggs on the surface of whatever we just vacuumed. Meaning that no matter how hard you push this vacuum nozzle up against that surface, there may be bugs that you never get off of it. So it shouldn't be viewed as an end-all control tool, but it can help out in your home if you think you have bed bugs there or you see bed bugs and you go ahead and vacuum those bugs up and remove them from that piece of furniture. So what I want to do now is talk to you a little bit about how to use a vacuum properly and some things that you should consider if you're looking for a vacuum to possibly address any bugs in your home. So here we have, you know, a Simplicity Sport vacuum, and in no way is this meant to be a marketing tool for Simplicity Sport. This is just the vacuum that we use as a company to, you know, deal with bed bugs and homes that we're servicing. Yes, I do think this is a good vacuum, um, but at the same point, there could be many other vacuums out there that can be just as good as this vacuum, and maybe even better. This is just the vacuum that we use. So what I want to do is just talk to you real quick about what to look for in a vacuum. So here we have, you know, like I said, a Simplicity Sport handheld, and as you can see, it's just a very simple nozzle on the end of this. Now, when you look to vacuum bed bugs up, you're going to obviously want a vacuum that has a decent amount of suction. Now, people are going to ask me, well, what's a decent amount of suction? And to be honest with you, I don't really know. All you need to make sure of is that, you know, if you put your hand on it, you can feel that vacuum sucking up against your hand and that there is some force there. Because bugs, although not the quick, bed bugs, not the quickest insects, they can hold on to a surface pretty well if they know that you're trying to remove them. And so you want something that can suck pretty hard. And what you want to do is that when you're vacuuming the surface of whatever piece of furniture you're vacuuming, you want to make sure you're turning the vacuum nozzle at a 45 degree angle and then you're going to work that surface. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually suck whatever bugs are on that surface right up into that, you know, hose and into the bag of the vacuum. If you go to vacuum a surface and you put it 90 degrees to the actual surface you're vacuuming and work it like this, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to end up just pushing the bugs and the eggs along the surface. By turning it at a 45 degree angle, you're allowing for some room for the bugs and eggs to be sucked up into the vacuum bag. So whenever you're vacuuming, you want to make sure you're leaving it at a 45 degree angle. And outside of that, it's really just about what you're considering in terms of what vacuum you're going to buy. 
The one thing that we recommend is that if you're going to vacuum up suspected bed bugs, you want to use a vacuum that empties into a bag. That's what we're recommending. Um, reason being is that as you suck these bugs up, we've actually shown that bugs can live right in this vacuum bag. So you suck them up and you think they're gone and you don't end up throwing out this vacuum bag. Well, those bugs could actually live in that vacuum bag and eventually walk right back out of the vacuum back into your home. So you want to make sure that whenever you vacuum up bugs or you think you might have had the chance of vacuuming up bugs, if you do have a vacuum that bags, when you're done vacuuming, you take that bag out of the vacuum, you fold it up, you put it in a garbage bag, you seal that garbage bag, and you take that garbage bag out of the home immediately and dispose of it in an outdoor trash receptacle. You don't want to leave that vacuum bag that might have bugs in it inside the home because they may work their way back out of it. Now, I'm not necessarily downplaying HEPA filter vacuums. HEPA filter vacuums are very good vacuums. I actually have one at home for personal use. But they're very difficult to empty out. They have that, you know, filter in them and things turn around and that filter while the lights are blinking on me in here. I'm a little bit weird. So they have that filter and the dust and dirt spins around or it turns inside that filter. But when you go to empty that out, it's very difficult to get all of the dust and debris out of that filter. And in that filter could be eggs or bugs themselves that you can't see and get out of there. So the reason why we don't necessarily recommend HEPA filter vacuums is just because they're very difficult to empty. Um, if there were a HEPA filter vacuum that filtered into a bag, that may be the best scenario. But if it's a straight HEPA filter vacuum, they're very tough to empty out. One that empties into a bag may be a better choice in terms of the vacuum you're going to use in your bed bug control efforts or whatever the case may be. Okay, so if we go back to the vacuum real quick, we talked about holding it at a 45 degree angle. We talked about making sure that you dispose of the vacuum bag right after you are done vacuuming up your bed bugs. And then you want to make sure that if somebody's doing any efforts in your home to control bed bugs, so say you go ahead and vacuum because you can't wait for the pest control guy to get there to do anything, so you're going to go ahead and vacuum to see if you can't address anything. You want to make sure you let whoever comes into your home know where you keep your vacuum because that may be a place that they want to inspect. You know, what if you vacuumed up a bug and didn't even know it before you found your problem and that bug walked out of the vacuum while it was sitting in your closet? That may be the source of an issue. So you may want the pest control guy to go in there and take a quick look at that situation to make sure that there are no bugs left in that environment. Alrighty, so basically, you know, that's really vacuums, uh, very simply. You know, I think they are a good device to use in bed bug control efforts. You can remove a lot of bugs with a vacuum. You don't want to view them as something that's going to control your problem, but it can help. And if you are going to vacuum, you want to make sure that when you're done, you're cleaning that vacuum out very well. And if you have a bag, that may be your best option. You can then just take that bag and dispose of it in an outdoor trash receptacle. You want to get that bag out of the house. That way you don't have any issues with bugs coming out and then possibly being an issue that way. All right, everybody. So if you have any questions about vacuums, and as I said, it's not anything about this specific vacuum. This is just the one that we use. But if you have any questions about vacuums, please don't hesitate to contact me, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have about the topic or any other topic that you'd like to see here on Bedbug TV. Remember, we dropped the central. So Bedbug TV. All right, everybody. I hope to see everybody soon enough.